This evening we turn to our text and the basis of our message today, as we mentioned before, will be the Gospel of John, the 20th chapter, verses 19 through 31, words that we have read just a few moments ago. In the name of Jesus, our risen Savior, dear friends. It certainly was a real joy and it was a blessing to be here last weekend when so many people gathered together to worship the risen Christ. The singing was uplifting, the scripture readings were faith building, the music was wonderful, our risen Lord was truly present in the preaching of God's word and in the sacrament of the Holy Supper. Our gathering together to worship the risen Christ was actually a testimony. It was a proclamation to one and all of our faith that in, indeed Christ rose from the dead and that we believe it to be true. Now the lilies are all gone, but the Easter celebration continues. And we continue to say, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And yet... Many people don't believe this truth. They doubt this truth. I'm talking about the truth of the resurrection that Christ rose from the dead. I have family members and I also have friends who question the reality of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I am sure that you have experienced the same thing or maybe you personally are even struggling with this same question. Maybe you say, give me proof. It just doesn't seem reasonable that someone dead could rise from the dead. And how can I be sure? It's a nice thought. And Easter is a nice celebration where we get together and it just seems wonderful when we're with our family. But is it really true? Did Jesus really rise from the dead? And this is why I am so glad that we have the example in our text today, in the gospel, the example of St. Thomas. Thomas, who was also a skeptic. He was a doubter. He was a doubter like many people doubt today and even back then. So Thomas had another name, we're told. His name was Didymus. And Didymus means the twin. And so in John's gospel, Thomas certainly lives up to that name because it seems, like, it seems like there are two different Thomases that we're talking about today. The first Thomas we see is the doubter. The doubter hears the message from the other disciples. Oh, Thomas, we have seen the Lord. He appeared to us. He was alive. We saw him. And this seems rather unusual to Thomas. Because he saw that Jesus had been put to death. He was crucified. He was put into the tomb. And the other disciples claimed to have seen Jesus alive after they had seen him put to death. But Thomas, the doubter, he refuses to believe. Who can blame Thomas for doubting? I don't know. The idea was unbelievable to him. How could a corpse, a body, a living body that was put to death, that stopped breathing, come back to life? It is impossible, he thought. The resurrection is inconceivable. Yet it happened, it happened in the flesh of Jesus. He rose. And so Thomas doubts the resurrection. He doubts it because it was humanly impossible. Thomas was only being reasonable. But human reason, my friends, will not lead to the kingdom of God. The very best that we can do fails and falls short of the glory of God. No one by his reason or his strength can ask, actually grasp or believe in the Son of God who was raised from the dead. Now this is what the scripture says. Would you read this with me? It says, The natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. We are born without faith. We cannot come to faith by ourselves. And even now there is that doubter inside each one of us. And just like Thomas, we have actually two natures. One of them is a full-fledged sinner. 
To be a sinner means that we lack faith in God and we disbelieve God's word and his amazing grace to forgive sins. And even when Christ has risen from the dead and given us full and free forgiveness, we still have sinful human flesh. This is the doubter in us. This is us, you and me. It is not just that the devil and the world are trying to lead us away. We ourselves, by our nature, want to push away Christ. We want to reject him and his resurrection. The other side of Thomas shows that he is not the doubter, but that he is a believer. When Thomas sees Jesus and touches him, he says to Jesus, my Lord and my God. And so in that phrase, Thomas confesses that Jesus is greater than any other person. He is the crucified and the risen Savior. He is the Messiah of God. Thomas is saying that he is God himself in human flesh. Now Thomas saw for himself that Jesus was alive. Jesus allowed him to see this. Thomas then looked at the wounds of Jesus, touched those wounds in his on his hands and in his side where the spear had pierced his flesh. And he saw it was Jesus. It really was Jesus. Poor doubting Thomas. He has carried the brunt of almost 2,000 years of bad press. When we say that someone doesn't believe, we say, oh, you're a doubting Thomas. Thomas is remembered for thousands of years in that way. But he just wanted to see. He wanted to see Jesus. He wanted to see Jesus like the other disciples saw him. Say what you like, I think that Thomas is really a hero in the Bible. He demonstrates for us that the faith of the early Christians was not really just wishful thinking and not just easy gullibility. They didn't just fall for a, a line or a story. They wanted evidence. They wanted to know for sure. And like an empirical scientist, he constructed his, his experiment to prove false the notion of the resurrection. And this is what, what he says. Read it with me. Unless I see his hands and his side and place my finger into the wounds in his hands and thrust my hand into the wound in his side, I will not believe. That's pretty certain. Even though Jesus gives Thomas the proof that he's asking for, Jesus goes on to warn the disciples, and he's warning us today that he would not be fulfilling this test over and over again. This is what he said. He said, blessed are they which have not seen and yet have believed. Now, Jesus warned that Faith would not be founded upon seeing, but rather upon hearing the truth, the truth of the resurrection with faith. And so the story about Thomas was written down so that you and I would believe. And he did what he would all, what we, he did what we would all like to do, and through his eyes, we see what really happened. Read it again with me. It says, these things are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Son of God. That's why God gives us the Old and the New Testament. He writes these things down, and it gives a testimony of what took place. I'm afraid that Satan uses our reason and uses our intellectual thinking to get in the way of faith sometimes. There is nothing wrong with asking questions. There's nothing wrong with getting the evidence and searching for the truth. But we, but we need to remember not to let our skepticism and our doubt get in the way of faith, the faith that God's Holy Spirit wants to work in each one of us. Oh yes, these things are written that you might believe, the scripture says. To believe, you must know. You cannot believe what you don't know. And these things are written for you, your learning then, 
that you might believe. And not just that you believe, but that you believe that Jesus Christ is the very Son of God, the one who died on that cross, the one who rose again for us. And if you believe this, then it makes a difference in how you live and act as a follower of Jesus Christ. In fact, I was listening. I was trying to listen to all the words of the uh, sunbeams today. And they were talking about shaking up the world. And that's what Jesus did. And that's what we do. We shake up the world. When we believe that Jesus Christ rose from the dead, then it makes a difference in our life. And we shake up the world. Now, if you believe, you know that it makes a difference in your life. And you live and you act as a follower of Jesus Christ. And if you believe, if you believe this, then it makes a difference in how you're going to live. If you believe, you know he's real. If you believe, you know he has power to transform your life into, that, into one that honors and, and praises and serves him. Now, the reality of the resurrection of Jesus prompted St. Thomas to go outside the Roman Empire to preach the gospel, just as, just as we are told to go out and preach the gospel. It is believed that St. Thomas sailed to India in 52 AD to spread the gospel to the region of Kerala. And I, was, I had an opportunity to visit there in Kerala in India, and there are many, many Christians there in that area, and actually many Lutherans there as well. Thomas serves as a good example to us of one who obeyed the command as Jesus tells us to go and make disciples of all nations. It was his desire to touch the wounds of Christ where the spear and the nails had pierced his body in order to prove the resurrection. Now tradition tells us that the life of Thomas came to an end when a spear was pierced into his body for the sake of the faith, for the sake of of Jesus. He was a martyr. There was no longer any doubt in the mind of Thomas. He knew Jesus was alive and he lived because he lived like he knew he was alive. And so the truth of the resurrection is that it means that our sins have been fully forgiven and paid for. The truth of the resurrection then is that you will also arise. The truth of the resurrection is that God loves you and that your life is always in his care and under his, his guidance, no matter what. No matter what it may feel like at the moment or the next. The truth of the resurrection then is that life and salvation for all that believe, that is, that trust in Jesus, forgiveness, eternal life, and blessing. That all belongs to us. Those are the gifts that God gives us. And the truth of the resurrection is the incredible gift that God gives us, the gift of himself, of his son, Jesus, and his righteousness for those who simply take him at his word, for those who trust to do all that he has promised. Would you read those words again with me? And these things are written that you might believe. May God grant that it may be so for you and for me, for Jesus' sake. And we can say again, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen.